Hello, it's Soul, and I'm sorry if I clickbaited you, but today I wanted to talk about how the world of Warcraft is systematically compromised, severely damaging its ability for players to enjoy the game, and how there's almost no hope of closing this Pandora's box. So you know, happy things. There's no B-roll footage this time, it's just gonna be me, and I want to talk about WoW's biggest, biggest, biggest problem, but I want to make it clear that this is me sharing my personal thoughts on a subject that is extremely important to me. We're going to disagree at certain points, maybe many points, no doubt. I just want you to hear me out and have a pleasant discussion on this if possible. The World of Warcraft team is, I would say, they're damaging its game and its credibility with public testing. This includes the public alphas and the betas that can be streamed, as well as the player test realms that people can freely just hop into to take a look at almost everything that there is weeks, maybe months ahead of time. There's almost, there's the almost unchecked data mining of the game while it's in development. And finally, there's the great machine of social media to which I am obviously a part of that hyper magnifies everything from the latest cinematic or cutscene leak to the bug on socketed legendary pieces, which was clearly a bug, but social media insists otherwise. This is something that I see as a huge problem, but not everyone sees it this way because we're also really used to this. The WoW team has been letting this happen for years and cultivated a whole industry of data miners and analysts and self-styled pundits keeping WoW development in the news. It's, it, it's very meta, like it's one thing to talk about the newest cinematic or speculating on the race to world first or, or making guides on how to do XYZ, but we also produce all sorts of in-development analysis way in advance and informing viewers that this is just alpha uh, slash beta or PTR footage is not as effective as one would think. We also play the part of armchair dev a lot of the time and examine what's Blizzard thinking between these builds. We question their motives, sometimes guess their motives and question that in our headcanon. We look at more than just the story or the lore, we look at the story while it's being written, taking close looks not only at books and in-game text, but also data mine strings and file names. And you know what? It's fun. And there's an audience for it, so creators like me make content for it. And it's easy too. When a build comes in, we look at the changes to classes, we give our best guess at what's going on, we put our facial reactions on a thumbnail, and uh, like, here we go, content, here is the huge nerfs coming to your favorite class. <gasps> Click engagements and, and smash that like button too. Again, it's fun. Obviously, we like talking about the world of Warcraft and video games in general. We're enthusiasts. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But I don't know of any other games that let us peek through the curtain to see how it all works on a weekly basis. No doubt if other big games did this, then we would see its own little industries pop up too. Many of us, and by us I mean people who watch these YouTube videos and read fan sites to gain knowledge, are, we're more than used to this, we just figure that's a part of how WoW works. Oh, is there a new build this week? Cool, let's see who, uh, let's see people race to see who makes their reactions first. What do, what do your favorite content creators think? What do the top players think of this change? Let's check the Twitters really quick. Oh, it's bad, it's, it's, it's really, it's really bad, wow. For me to suggest that this be put to an end is tantamount to me jeopardizing my own work as well as many others who thrive off of data mining, public testing, and commenting on these subjects. How are we supposed to make guides and add-ons quickly enough to be of help to players? More important than content creators though, because you know, screw us, what about the World of Warcraft itself? WoW risks being ruined because we won't be able to give our feedback. I mean, look at the recent thing with the experience values for the Maw intro. Bad, Blizzard. Bad, bad, bad. Like, we're their free quality assurance team, aren't we? We find all the bugs and issues and get them fixed. Remember what happened with Battle for Azeroth? Blizzard revealed Azerite stuff way too late and screwed up the momentum for pretty much the whole expansion. Thankfully in Shadowlands, they brought conduits up to us early enough, we gave lots of blowback, and we got that changed into, well, 
I'll take conduit energy over what we could have had instead. So there are good things that come from transparency being part of the design process. Despite whatever facts and figures being thrown around, there is no denying that World of Warcraft still commands a very big audience. So maybe dunking on WoW over an incomplete feature is part of this winning formula 17 years later. But I can't help but critique it. I can't help but take the good that may come from public testing and twist it into this very sober, almost depressing narrative about the state of WoW uh, and many of its players and its community of talking heads. You probably heard this said a number of times, maybe you said it yourself, that it feels like the magic of WoW seems to have long faded, right? There's no sense of mystery or discovery, there's just the next raid and dungeon, the next farm, the next system to wrangle with for a few months before the next thing, and it's boring. It's just kind of the same old thing. There's a ton more I could say to drag down our feelings about WoW, but you know, you get the idea. We're all wired differently, but I'll share my observations of how we kind of got to this state. Keep in mind that, you know, I'm a WoW player, and I do make guides, mostly based on alpha, beta, and PTR stuff, and I commentate on the social grievances within the game. When World of Warcraft begins its test cycles, it's it's a big deal. It's like the start of the holiday season for content creators and guide writers and commentators where we ramp up production with the need to inform and inform we do. All you need to know is somewhere out there. We're just a click away and you can learn pretty much everything there is to know. Next week, there's more info. And then the week after that, more info every week, almost every day, if you keep binging on in development news and reactions. And you know what that does? I think it compromises that sense of mystery or discovery because you know everything, including how things have been changing over time. Over the course of a week's or a month's long test cycle, that can seriously wear down a person's psyche. And I've learned that not everyone can handle being an observer for that long and yet still feel excited when the patch or the expansion goes live. A person who would consider themselves prepared for release has very little, if anything, left to discover and all that's left is to execute on the plan that they set or follow the pre-written guides and do what the boss mods tell them to do. Of course, not everyone does this. I'll probably get plenty of comments from you folks to suggest that those weaker people just shouldn't look at spoilers, but it's okay for me because reasons. But I believe very, very strongly that this exacerbates a culture divide between players who are prepared and players who are learning which is not the same as a skilled versus an unskilled player. For example, why might you have done the research to learn the pull order from all these dungeons? It's probably because you want to make sure that you are carrying your own weight. And who do you prefer to group with? Preferably, uh, probably players who did the same because you want to make sure that your runs are successful. And what if it turns out that one or more of those folks aren't as knowledgeable and risks botching the run? Them. I know that's a pretty extreme scenario, but at varying degrees, we see players of vastly different levels of experience thanks to the learning and practicing of dungeons in an environment where they can just run them with impunity. That kind of sort of elitism begins day one of the expansion or the season. I can list off any number of reasons why the WoW community is considered to be toxic, including, you know, Blizzard's own missteps that put off players. But what they're allowing here, what Blizzard is allowing here, feels like an infection that starts from our own early reactions and assumptions, and it spreads to the very fringes of the player base. Because anyone out there can avoid looking at the articles and the videos, but it's harder to dodge fellow players trash talking unreleased content. I'm going to break for a second to uh, talk about myself because you know, that's like my favorite thing to do. It's a well known fact that I do not do dungeon or raid testing in unreleased content. I prefer to go into these experiences totally blind. I don't even look at the dungeon journal before the raid starts. I just take my team and I do a backslash ready check. I tell everyone to, I, I tell the team to lust on pull and have the healers keep us up for as long as possible so we can find out what it is that's killing us. In the case of raids, which is our big you know, group activity, we don't look at guides, we figure it out because I believe that relying too much on guides takes away that sense of discovery. I want our guild experience to be about us meeting and eventually overcoming challenges and not following an instruction manual with all of the answers. Hands-on learning is a part of gaming that I think is sacred because you don't get that noob experience back. That's what I'd like to think that makes my guild kind of special. 
Uh, we ain't limit, <laughs> that's for sure, but we go into these fights and encounters not knowing what we need, and somehow we win. Maybe by burying them under a mountain of corpses, but we win anyway. And I can say that, versus, well, I followed the guide, I followed the meta, and I beat the boss. In that case, it, it, for me, it just wouldn't feel like my win. Some of the most fun that I have in the world of Warcraft comes from the surprises, the things that I don't know. Now, considering what I do on YouTube, that means a lot of my fun comes from testing, because I'm some of the I'm some of the first people to discover and figure out a thing, a feature, a, a puzzle to solve and try to explain. Maybe there are new interactions with an ability that's definitely going to change before going live, and it's fun to discover those things. And even this week with 9.1, there are things that I didn't notice, let alone uh, cover, like certain rares and how to unlock them, where you know where a certain thing is or how something works. It's just fun to discover new things. I feel like not everyone in WoW these days cares for that. And maybe your grievances are different. I'm not here to question any of those, but I do very much question all this advanced knowledge that players have that ultimately takes experience away from them. Actually, I guess it is that. Players aren't experiencing the game themselves anymore. That's the way I see it. I imagine that with such a long wait for patch 9.1, people digested the little bits of news like it was fresh air, right? But it continued to a point that it almost feels like they played through it already. And now that it's live, it just doesn't feel as exciting. It makes the whole time gating bitching feel even more apparent because we're here waiting for the next week of content and story, but maybe we already read up on everything that's going to happen. I do agree that being prepared is important, but thanks to the WoW team, the meaning of that has crossed the line from making sure that you're fully repaired with your bags empty and having some snacks nearby to knowing the optimal questing route and the pull order and optimizing your every move in the first two days because your time is that important. Oh, but at the same time, WoW doesn't have any sense of discovery or surprise, the puzzles are brain dead and the plot is predictable. Asking Blizzard to abandon this reckless transparency is clearly going to be met with massive resistance. The very top players who have everything to lose yeah, I think they're definitely the type of audience who benefits from getting any advantage that they can get, including knowing things in advance. But does that mean that they need this knowledge? I don't think so. I'd like to think that the top guilds and teams in WoW will still be the top guilds and teams in WoW without knowing that they have to, what, race and covenant change to be as close to the meta as possible. I don't see a problem if region differences aside, everyone can start at the same level of knowledge and experience when entering new content. Probably the biggest obstacle to overcome when trying to push an idea like this is how we, and I mean most of us, and I mean me too, think that we know better. Hell, this is a video with me spouting rhetoric to Blizzard as if I know better. But what I mean by this is that most of us just don't trust Blizzard to do what normal development studios do, and it's just to let them work behind the curtain so that they can save us from the gore that is incremental development and present this finished product to us in a grand reveal. People who close their blinders to the news might be experiencing this new patch like, hey, this is cool, this is neat, hey, look at that goofy ass mount, what the hell is this empowerment bar, oh, there are some helpful tool tips, great. It sounds insane because we can point out one reason after another why Blizzard can't be relied to make a bug-free, issue-free, perfectly crafted game that will please every audience and has player housing. And we can claim that without our feedback, our oh-so-valuable feedback, WoW would have been a dead game like 20 years ago or something. It's partially thanks to us watching WoW develop from one weekly build after another that this trust erodes. Look no further than WoWhead's PTR Build News Roundup to see your class nerfed to the ground while your rival class is given another buff, and no fewer than a dozen videos with reactions. Or we can take a look at someone who made a video to translate this new feature or system who isn't a dev. In fact, that's probably me guessing how this thing is going to work and wondering if I should be excited or not. 
The more vocal public tends to look at this not as an early preview, but most often like a doomsday prophecy. Like, oh my god, did you hear about how you have to farm another currency from Torghast? And the progression is time-gated. Once again, another overcomplicated system on top of systems, classic Blizzard. Side note, this wasn't even hyperbole. People really think that this is overcomplicated when really all Blizzard had to do was talk about it more. Okay, never mind the side note. Another, another very big problem that Blizzard made for itself is that relative to how much raw data that they let out to the public, they don't talk about it nearly as much as they should because as much as content creators and guide writers do want to understand what's going on and inform the public, oftentimes we don't see the big picture. Blizzard puts out this unfinished map and we control the narrative. There's no guidelines. There's no code of conduct that they give us among content creators. The loudest people set the tone and the loudest people are usually not very happy. Now it would go a long way if Blizzard were to communicate to everyone more and let us in on what the heck happened with a certain class or what this new feature is all about. But that's also a pretty big ask. It's like being called into a meeting to talk about progress on your project. Now it is important to talk about it so your stakeholders are kept in the loop, but there's also a point where it gets irritating because you're working on how to talk about the project more than you're actually you know, working on the project. We're neither here nor there, but something about the show and tell ratio has got to improve. So what can the WoW team do? My take, it really is that easy. You just gotta stop doing the public testing at its current level. Now, I don't want public testing to end outright, but just for the scope to change. We already have tournament realms that are a bit more sandboxy with NPCs to give us what we need. If the WoW team wants our feedback when it comes to say, how class abilities and rotations feel during development, a tournament realm is all we need. Like, let us throw ourselves at target dummies or something let, uh, so we can check out new menus and that sort of stuff. A client based on the tournament realm is all that's necessary for that. I think that's mostly okay because people have pretty legit concerns over how their class and spec is going to play. Switching or not switching can be a big investment and a limited test client is I think it's all that's needed to check it out and give feedback and at the least make informed decisions for themselves on classes or specs that they want to play. But outside of bugs, there's very little, if any, valuable feedback we can give on what? The environments? Dialogue? Cutscenes? Puzzles? The, the, the story? Come on. I'll argue that we don't need to test any of that stuff out and I'm gonna win, period. And by using a proper test client like this, there's nothing to encrypt and not much to data mine, nothing important gets leaked. Just earlier today before making this recording, there was a Diablo 4 quarterly update. It was only about the art, really. There was nothing substantial, but the takeaway that I had after reading it was, boy, it'd sure be nice. Sure be nice to have fewer but meatier updates like that. You know, like a, like a normal game. Of course, WoW's not a new game let alone a normal one, but I very firmly believe that the World of Warcraft team has got to invest whatever they need to in order to develop its content behind a curtain again, with focused testing with limited time windows. Every few months or so, maybe we'll get a nice meaty blog post from senior developers to throw us a bone. Maybe show some footage and talk about progress on whatever the heck it is that they're doing. The takeaway here is that I want a World of Warcraft where on day one of the patch or an expansion, I'd like to see all of us share in the moments of discovery closer together. Let us discover the new leveling gear sets as we level and explore the environments beyond the trailer and the screenshots that we get and maybe we'll even get lost. Imagine chat hollering over some rare that they found and watch the people in the zone screaming, ah, wait, hold on, I don't even know how to get to where you're at. I wanna see zone and dungeon and raid reaction videos of the live game, not the alpha or the beta or the PTR. But after this long, frankly, I, I don't see it happening. And that's really, really discouraging. But I could also see it happening. And just the thought of it has me really excited to play that World of Warcraft.